Okay, let's sit and meditate for a few minutes. Anam Pavana Sapaktan. Close your eyes. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. And then just try to stay with the sensation of the in breath and the out breath. If you want, you can use a meditation word to go with the breath. But with the in breath, to with the out. But to means awake. That's the name the Buddha earned through his awakening. What did he awaken to? He awakened to the fact that he'd been causing himself all sorts of unnecessary stress and suffering. And because it was unnecessary, he could learn how to put an end to that. And it was the stress and suffering that he was creating, which was the real burden on his mind. There are unpleasant things in the world, but they weigh on the mind only when we take them and push them on the mind and impose them on the mind, cling to them, lay claim to them as our own. And so what he learned to, to how to do was how to live in the world and you not suffer from being in the world. That's an important skill. That was his answer to that question. Was that, how can we find true happiness? You may have noticed we spend a lot of time bowing down to the Buddha here. Why do we respect him? Because he teaches us to respect something really worthy of respect in ourselves, which is that desire for true happiness, a happiness that doesn't change, happiness that doesn't cause anybody else any, any suffering. Because it's only that kind of happiness that can last. If, ha if your happiness depends on the suffering of other people, then they're not going to stand for it. And this is the way it is normally with the types of pleasure we find in the world. There's gain. Well, if somebody gains, somebody else loses. And there's status. Well, if somebody gains status, somebody else loses that status. And there's praise. When you can start comparing people, somebody comes out better than somebody else. These things create divisions. And it's a kind of happiness that depends on the suffering of others. So that's not what we want. We want something that's totally innocent, something that's totally pure. So we have to work on our own inner qualities. That's why we're meditating. We're developing qualities like mindfulness. You keep the breath in mind. That's mindfulness. And then you watch it as it comes in goes out and see what you can do to make the breath more comfortable. Is the breathing too long, too short, too heavy, too light? You can make changes. It's by working on these qualities, with these qualities of mindfulness alertness, that you develop your inner resources. You develop the wisdom. You develop the discernment. You develop the, all the qualities you need in order to take care of the mind and to dig down deep and just understand why it is that we create all this unnecessary suffering around things. When you come to the solution of that, okay, then you've arrived at true happiness. So this is inner work that we're doing. That's based on outer work. If your life is a mess, if you mistreat other people and yet you try to meditate, the results are not going to be all that good. You've got to look at the way you live. Are you living in a way that's causing suffering to others? You've well, learned how to be less of a burden on others. That's why we have the precepts against killing and stealing and lying and illicit sex, taking intoxicants. You straighten out your life outside, so it makes it easier to straighten out things inside. And you begin to realize that the issues of life that really do weigh down on the mind don't come from other people. They come from your own lack of skill. But fortunately, you can learn these skills, and it starts by developing your mindfulness and alertness like we're doing right now. Give the mind a good place to stay in the present moment so it's not running after things outside all the time. And it can sit here and watch very carefully and very consistently what's actually going on and begin to sort out which things in the mind are skillful, which things are not. So when you're doing this, you're basically bowing down to yourself, bowing down to your own highest aspirations, the good part inside you. And that's really worth paying respect for, showing respect to. And you do that by practicing the meditation every day, by making sure your actions fall in line with the precepts every day. And that way you find that the suffering that's weighing down the mind really is coming from inside. And when you can stop that inner cause or those inner causes, then there's nothing to weigh the mind down at all.